Well, hello everybody and uh, welcome to an excerpt from Java Masterclass in which I'll teach you how to make custom annotations. We will be making a command system. If I type in slash boss, we will be automatically tap completing and automatically making different subcommands such as create or remove. And we will even be making an automatic help if I misspell something and the code will be beautiful, simple, it will be very, very clear and easy. All you're gonna do is type in the custom annotation that I, te that I will show you to make and then implement the method and then you can do whatever you want with it. So for the purpose of simplicity, we will be using foundation because it's gonna save us a lot of time. However, if you wanna do it without foundation on the native spig order paper api you can go ahead to project orient week one check out the video about commands and i'm going to teach you in the first sub part of that video there's a little series about commands how to do it natively it is literally the same setup because uh, once you have the command framework you can just plug in the annotations onto whichever framework you want to use so I'm going to be making a new abstract class called annotated command, which will extend the foundation simple command. And uh, we have to pass in basically the command label. For example, this can be slash boss like this one inside the constructor. And then we have to override the on a command method. Now, please make sure if you are using foundation, do not type in auto register here because obviously this is an abstract class, so it cannot work this way. What we will be doing here, we're going to make another command, uh, another command class called boss command, which will then extend the annotated command. That's right. And then we have to implement the constructor. And now the constructor can just be boss. This will represent the slash boss command like this one. And uh, that's pretty much it for now. We have the basic framework. Now we have to actually make the command annotation. So for that, I'll just create a new sub package called annotation. And I'll go ahead and I'll make a new annotation parameter, just like this one. Now in Java, when making custom annotations, this is the special syntax you'll need to be familiar with. And uh, the way it works in Java, if you just use this one, it actually not, it's not going to work properly because we have to spe specify two different um, parameters for that annotation. The first one being target. No, the first one being retention. And you have to import this from Java, that length, that annotation. And the retention policy means whether when you compile your plugin, this annotation will be retained. If you type anything else than runtime, it will be actually not in the plugins source code. So make sure to select runtime so that we can later use reflection to find that annotation. The second setting that every annotation must have is, as I mentioned, the target and the target basically specifies where we want the annotation be able to be put. So you for now, we're just going to go with one and we want this to be placed above different methods. And now if I copy the parameter and I go right here, I can now start placing it anywhere above a method. However, if I try to place it on any other position, IntelliJ is going to give us an error. It's not applicable to be placed on a class. If you change this to a type, this error will be gone, but then you cannot use it above a method. If you want to use it above multiple elements, uh, you need to put in these complex brackets and then just use comma and specify multiple things. For now, this video will be very simple. I just wanna use it above a method. There we go. And uh, we can now go ahead and we can now create uh, what you've seen in the video introduction. There we go. I just placed it because there's nothing special about it. However, I need to explain to you why you can't really rely on the name of the method because many of you guys want to use obfuscation and this will then damage. Obviously, it's going to make it impossible to, to learn what uh, command label you're supposed to type if your methods are being called AAA, AAAA, obviously. So that's why uh, we can't rely on this. And that's why we have to actually type in, uh, what do we want to type in, for example, slash boss create inside the parameter right here. Now, how do you do this? If I just try to do it now, it says cannot find method value. 
And this is because the annotation is empty. So what, what we have to do, we actually have to put in the specified setting. So string value, that's it. Do not use any access modifiers as they are redundant and uh, they will not work. Anything other than public is not going to work and public is redundant. Now, if I go back to the boss command, you'll see that this one works. And uh, even if I try to do it without it, now it'll say I have to use uh, the actual value. So if I type in an empty value right here, it means that I just type in boss. If I type in create, it means I typed in boss create. If I typed in uh, remove, it means I've typed in boss remove. Notice that I can explicitly um, name the values, I guess, key. And uh, since Java is quite smart, it figures out that there is only one thing and the one thing is called value. If you only have one field or one method in the annotation class and that method is called value, you do not have to specify it explicitly. So either this or this is going to work. If I would have to have multiple things right here, for example, we can have requires player, right? If you want this to only work for players instead of console. Now Java doesn't know that much. It cannot automatically figure out. So what you have to do, you have to specify the value here, comma, requires player, and then either true or false. What you can also use is a default keyword. If you use the default keyword and you set the default value to false. Now, if you do not specify this, it will automatically be on false. So that is how it works. Um, and now let me see. Java is quite smart now again. Uh, and uh, now you don't have to specify anything here. I don't have to do this. I think this can be a homework for you guys how to implement console checking. That should be quite easy. Now, to, now that we have that, we have to actually go to the annotated command. And then we have to basically scan the class that is extending the annotation annotated command. And we have to find all the methods that have this parameter. Then we have to check what the helvert actually type in. And then we have to compare it to the actual value inside that annotation. And then we have to just run uh, that method. We have to use a little bit of reflection, but tr don't worry. It is quite easy. First thing we have to do, we need to locate these methods. And for performance reasons, I do like to put them in a hash map. Make sure to import the method from the right package, which is called Java Lang reflect, just like this methods and equals to a new beautiful hash map. Make sure to import everything properly, the map and the hash map. You can see my imports up here. And then we can actually do this in the constructor so that we save a lot of performance each time the command is loaded. We already know about these uh, methods. Find the methods. We can just call it in the command um, constructor, just like that. And then what we can do, we can just go ahead and we can iterate. So we can get this instance of the class, by the way, in Java, if you call get class or this get class, this is the same. If you call this, it will actually return the boss class. It will return the highest class on top of, uh, on, on top of the list that extends whatever you're calling. So this presumably will return boss command. This is how it works. And then we have to call get declared methods. If you just call get methods, it's not going to work because then it's kind of weird. It's actually going to scan this class if I'm not mistaken. But if we call get declared methods is actually going to scan the, you know, it's going to actually scan the top of the list and it's going to scan all the inheritance of the, all, all of the children as well. Now that we have the method, we can check if method dot is annotation present parameter dot class. We actually have to put in the class, uh, the class of the parameter class. Hopefully that makes sense. And then if that is present, what we can do, we can get the parameter instance by simply putting this to a variable. So parameter parameter method dot get annotation. I hope that this is correct. There we go. And uh, if that doesn't work again, you can call declared annotation, but I do think both should work here. So either one of these will work either declared or just the normal one. And then my friends, what we can do, we can just put in this methods dot put, and then we can just call parameter value 
and uh, well, this one is suggesting us to put it to lowercase, we don't have to. So we can just store the value, which is going to be this, which is going to be then create, remove or empty. And then we can just store the actual method. Here is a little trick. If you are a beginner developer, people try to make mistakes here, people tend not to try to make mistakes. Some of you guys may forget this, some of you guys may make it private, some of you guys even may make it static right uh, by not knowing the proper way this cannot be private uh, i mean it could but then you have to uh, just set the method to be accessible it's just more complex and this cannot be static because then you cannot work with the command instance properly so point is we can check for that how do we check for that well we can use the modifier class in java lang reflect is static and this takes in something called modifier. So we can just store the modifiers of the method, which is an integer by calling method.getModifiers. And then we can just check, and I'm gonna use foundation to save a couple of lines of code. We can check inside the valid class, check Boolean, if the method is not static and if the method is public. And I'm gonna type in modifiers in both, just like that. And this is the equivalent of simply having an if statement. If is not static, then we would just want to throw an exception saying the method get name in class, there we go, must be public and non static. Yeah, that's right. AI has auto completed pretty much what I wanted to put there. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. Let me know in the, in the lesson description if you have any questions for it. Again, this is just a safety check. You don't need to have it, but it's a good thing to have. It's a good coding practice, especially if you are planning on releasing your plugin as an API so that other developers can then properly extend it and they can avoid making these mistakes. You can even force someone to, to put in the final keyword if you check if the method is final, which is really, really nice. And now when I actually type a command, we have to implement the on command section to prevent someone from accidentally overriding this. I'll just make this final. And then we can actually get the first parameter and we can check if the arguments, and again, this is the same if you code with bucket or foundation, so it doesn't matter. If the arguments are actually above zero, then we can get the first argument. However, if we just type in, for example, boss, then we don't have anything here. So then we have to return the empty. We have to backwards, uh, we have to default to empty. And this is very important because we wanna make sure, we wanna check if we have a handler for empty something, and then the handler is, is gonna print, it's gonna call this method, right? Not the handler, but if we have the annotation right here for empty value, and then we can simply print out the main menu. So if we have that, what we can do, we can go ahead and we can find the method by the parameter. And this is pretty cool here you can actually call to lowercase right so if i accidentally type in a slash boss create or something like that it'll still work and then if the method is not null you can either just call to try and catch if you're not using foundation if you're using foundation we have a beautiful method inside reflection util called invoke method and then uh, the instance is going to be this However, what happens if we type something that doesn't exist? Well, as I've shown you in the game, uh, there is actually a way to automatically print out all the different arguments. So what we can do, we can just tell the following message. So usage equals to, and then we can get the label. Foundation does it automatically. If you're not using the foundation, just call the label that you have available at the method right here. And then we can do string dot join. We can join it by this little thing. And then we can go ahead and we can get the key set right here. And then ChatGPT tries to do something that I don't like. There we go. And then we can simply surround it by these little things. And this will auto generate the balls and then create remove. But remember, we have one method that has empty string right here. So this is actually going to put in this right here because it'll it'll automatically also join uh, the key that is empty. So if you want to get rid of this, here's a little ninja trick. We can convert this into a stream. We can then filter the method name using Lambda expression, which I cover in another video in Java masterclass. And if the method name is not empty, then it's not going to be filtered. And then we can collect that into collectors dot 
to list or yeah collectors that joining is fine as well okay so before we pass uh, the keys to the string join method we'll simply remove the one key that was empty using the elegant streams in java 8 or above that's the first thing last part of this video very simple we have to implement tab completion on tab complete foundation already does that if you are not using foundation again just uh, implement um, you'll be implementing tab executor i think and then just watch that video in a project or in week one on how to do that it's very simple and then basically if the length of arguments is one we just want to complete the uh, methods and then we want to complete the key set very simple if you're using native very similar indeed and then here i do not want to complete anything so i'll just return this is just a alias to return a simple array list it's a simple trick because if you if you return null you'll, you'll actually end up with tab completing all player names this is just how bucket works all right guys and again i can make this final so that people will accidentally not extended but of course if you want to allow extensions then you can delete that final from it and if you want to do something else here then you can also delete final from it but then you have to make sure to tap complete and you have to make sure to also retain super after you've done your code okay guys and that's it before we go ahead and test it we have to make sure to register the command if you are using a native make sure to place it in uh, the plugin that yaml and then you're going to register it by setting the executor to the command itself inside the on enable method if you're using foundation very simple just type in auto register make the class final compile it and it's going to work as it should just to prove to you that this is new code, I've placed one before the messages, and now we can join the game, and I can type in boss, create, remove, and if I type in something else, it'll automatically generate the proper usage, although it says create and remove. Okay, something went wrong. Join this, and then collectors joining. Was it to list? Let me try that. And it absolutely was. You know, sometimes if I listen to these uh, suggestions by from IntelliJ without thinking it'll actually make the co code worse so you're gonna be careful about that and if I type in create and I accidentally misspell the case it'll also work properly including tab completion now before we finish this video I gave you a little homework and I was thinking a little bit about this homework requires player default false and how you could you know implement this because it's actually not that simple and it can confuse a little bit some people because the problem here is we just store the method and we don't store the annotation so one way to do this would be to simply do some work here in the on command so we need to basically use a reflection again to get the parameter and then a parameter requires player and this is not a player then we can just return tell if you're using foundation this command requires a player that's one way right but uh, for performance reasons this then does a bunch of expensive reflection calls so what we can do we can just store this in a tuple foundation already provides you with a tuple and tuple basically means it, it, it is a beautifully simple class that simply holds two values very simple you can just literally copy it from my foundation's github or you can just implement it yourself very simple just stores two values of any kind and then here we just put in a new tuple storing the method and the parameter like this one and then here we can basically just get it like this and then if the method is not null we can just get let me just rename that for simplicity's sake so we can get the method by getting the first which is the key and then we can get parameter annotation like this one and this is going to save you some perfor performance ticks and it's going to make the plugin work a little bit faster so i hope that this video is helpful i hope that you will have a lot of fun with it a lot of very advanced systems have been made by custom annotations let me know if you got some questions, join our live coaching calls. They happen twice a week and they're there to help you. And I cannot wait uh, to see you in the next video. Take care.